Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Hope you're having a really good Saturday. Today we're going to take a look at this knife by Fura, available at Gearbest. And uh, it's not a uh, super budget knife, but it is still definitely in the budget range. And I meant to show this thing a while ago, and a number of you have been asking for it. It is finally ready for me to show you this review. I'm sorry guys that it took so long. I, I really am. There was a few times when I meant to do it and I either forgot or I just was feeling ill that day or whatever. Um, and I had some other stuff that I had prepared, you know, ahead of time that basically I just had to polish off and, and plug in. And so I didn't do the full review until now, but it's here now. And I think you're going to like this video. We've got a drop point blade. D2 steel, which I think it probably is D2 steel, high saber grind, TC4 titanium handle, frame lock, lock bar insert, flipper. You've got some holes in uh, both sides on the show side and the working side's got a little bit to help it uh, be a little bit lighter than it would be otherwise. You don't have a lanyard hole, but you could tie a lanyard to that back pillar that's right at the very end. And... It's got a tip up pocket clip, right side only though. And that's a nutshell overview. But if you want more details, stick around for the full review coming at you right now. About a week ago, I did a review of this knife along with the uh, blue sibling to it with a titanium blade on it. Well, it turns out Gearbest had sent me a spare one, and yeah, it's my own fault. I did order a second one. So I paid full price for this, but I'm willing to sell it because I need a little bit of income coming in. Um, for all the reasons I've needed some before, uh, now my niece is getting married, and uh, she'll be getting married in the first weekend of June, and that'll be down in uh, the United States, and so... I just booked a flight to get there, 500 Canadian bucks round trip, and that's a deal. That's around $400 US. So I'm going to be selling these two knives, and this one's brand new. I haven't even cut a single thing with it yet. I just took it out of the package to show you. If you ask me to sharpen it, I can sharpen it for you first. Otherwise, you'll get it with the factory edge. Uh, sharpening is $5. Let's take a look at this thing. I like this color. It's available in four colors. You've got it in this, uh, this is called copper color. You can get it in a blue and a gray and a green as well. And uh, those are all solid colors. The uh, handles here have nice chamfering on the side all over. That looks really good. Even these holes have chamfering on them. Everything's smooth. Uh, the sharpest corner is right here. <laughs> everything else is rounded nicely. Even on the uh, working side, everything's rounded. And then you've got this series of six holes here. Slightly stepped down just to repeat the theme of the five holes here. So five holes here, six holes here, and they're smaller. So I don't know. That's kind of odd. It's repeating the theme, but it's a little bit different. Uh, you've got a relief cut here on this frame lock arm. You've got uh, the uh, lock up is using a lock bar insert, which is steel. And you can even see if I can get the light just right, there you go, just behind my thumbnail there, you can see a little bit of a hole in the steel. That's the relief cut for the lock bar insert to get into, and then it can't go any further than that. So that's really good. And uh, the lock up for it is very good for a brand new knife. It's uh, the leading edge here is just before halfway point across. And uh, I'll give you a close-up picture of this just so that you can be sure exactly where it is. We've got ball bearings in here, and I'll show you pictures of those in a minute. We've got a captured um, stop pin, and so that means the stop pin, you can't see it here. The stop pin rides inside a uh, little trench that's cut into the uh, steel of the blade itself, and uh, it stops when it's closed. So it doesn't touch anything else except for that stop pin there. And then the stop pin touches on the inside there. And here you can see the detent hole. So the detent ball off of this lock bar insert rests in there when it's closed. 
and uh, you can see the detent suck this in right at the last second there. It holds it very well. It Nothing can catch on here in your pocket. You've got a little bit of a flipper tab sticking out, uh, nothing sharp on it. So it's not really a problem for uh, being a pocket pecker. I haven't found that to be a problem yet. It, then again, it depends on what you're wearing in your in your pocket, what else you have other than the knife, right? But for most people, you're going to find it nicely rounded. There's no jimping anywhere on here. You can see the whole thing, though. None of it. It's a little bit of a relief cut right there on the lock arm and a little space there so you can get your thumb in there. Very easy to uh, release that frame lock. In terms of how you do it, it's not easy as in being super soft. It takes, you know, an appropriate amount of pressure to disengage the lock. That spring tension is very good. The, um, what else do we have to say here? The pocket clip. It's the same pocket clip you see on some other knives. Uh, not on this one, but some other knives that we've uh, looked at Fura before. So here's I got my, here's I got. So here I've got my pants with a pocket and you can see how it goes in. It sticks out a little bit less than an inch, uh, a little bit less than two centimeters. And so that might be too much for some people. For most scenarios, for most occasions, I don't mind. It holds on quite well and it's always easy to get on. Uh, the shape and the design of the hook part is adequate and uh, it's quite functional. Don't mind it at all. Because of the angle on it right there, on some pants, it's going to want to tuck and stay at the back, which is a good thing because you get your flipper tab right back here and you want that as far back as you can get it. Uh, this one actually suits this knife a little bit because it's got curves on and the, the knife handle's got curves on it. So I like it here. I just wish they would have made two of them, a mirror image of this one, so that you could put it on the other side as well. Because there's some people who are lefties who like having it on the left side, even if, even though the frame lock is right-handed, they still sometimes like that. But um, be that as it may, I'm not that good with... Uh, there we go. I sometimes end up putting pressure on the frame lock arm with my left hand. You see where my thumb is right now? Just instinctively, I put it there. And then it's harder to flip out because I'm pushing down on the detent, but it still can be done and uh, works quite well that way. So that's the pocket clip. Okay, so let's show you the pictures of the inside of this knife right now. Okay, there you go. So you saw the ball bearings. Uh, you saw the detent ball. And, uh, you know, everything in there, how it works. We've got a stone wash all over this blade, and that looks really nice. I have to re-sharpen uh, this knife again. You see the blade, if I turn it this way, how it's really wore out right here. Uh, that's because I did that cut test to see how much this would cut compared to other knives with D2 steel. And that's the area that I was cutting in. And so it just needs to be sharpened again. And I will sharpen up. I will tune up this edge again before I ship it to anybody who buys it. Well, even if you don't buy it, I'm going to do that after the video. I forgot that I hadn't done that yet. So there it is. But uh, it's got a nice sharp working edge. I sharpened it and uh, I've sharpened it a couple times and tested it. So let's give you all the different specs for it. So D2 steel has a Rockwell hardness of around 60, maybe a tiny bit less, sometimes 59, but it's right around 60. So we've got that drop point on the blade. It's almost a spear point style, high saber grind, sharpener's choil, and that's the blade. And then the handle, as we've already looked at before, is a nice empty frame lock titanium. The dimensions for all these parts, the cutting edge and the blade length are the same, nine centimeters, 3.54 inches. The blade thickness, almost four millimeters, 3.92, which is 0.154 inches. Nice and thick blade stock. But because the grind comes up so high, it's actually a very nice bevel on here. I like it an awful lot. The uh, blade depth, that's the spine to the cutting edge, is 2.54 centimeters, almost an inch exactly. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.63 millimeters. That's 0 
It was a little bit less than that from the factory, but since I had to sharpen it a couple of times, I measured it the way it is today. The handle length is 12 centimeters. That's 4.72 inches. The grip area in here is 9.46 centimeters. That's 3.72 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.29 centimeters. That's 0 0.051 inches. So basically half an inch thick. The handle depth is 2.5 centimeters that's 0.987 inches so basically an inch this way and half an inch this way very nice the total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 21.1 centimeters 8.3 inches and those 8.3 inches weigh 131 grams which is 4.6 ounces very good weight for this size knife and it's comfortable it feels good in the hand it looks great and it's just very well made. Very comfortable in the right or left hand for me. My hands are large, bordering on extra large. That's about 10 or 11 in European sizes. How much are you gonna have to pay for this knife? Well, it all depends on when you go shopping and which color you want. The um, copper color, this color right now is US $1 less than all the others. So the prices right now for Three, the other colors except for the copper are $33.99 US, $44.24 Canadian, $28.18 Euros or 25.2 pounds sterling. And this copper color right now is $32.99 US or $42.94 Canadian. And I didn't get the uh, over to the seas numbers for the copper one. So 33 US and I'm selling it for 25 and it's in perfect condition. I've up, I've, you know, lubricated it. I've tuned it up and you're going to get my cutting edge on there for no extra money. You know, whereas it's going to cost you five bucks to get my cutting edge on here. So that's a really good thing. So what are the unique features on here? There's nothing really unique on it. Um, but some of the biggest strengths are how comfortable it is and how good it looks. This is a fine looking knife. It's everything's nice and smooth, except for the part that's supposed to be sharp. It just looks great. Almost any grip you want to hold it with, you know, reverse grip, either one, either one works fine. You can pull up forward and do these pinch grips that work great. Very comfortable. It's a regular fist grip or thumb up because the width of the steel here is just very, very comfortable. There is a bit of a thumb rise. You can see a bit of a transition point right there. Maybe when I tilt it, the light will hit it differently. There you go. So it's rising up there and then it starts coming down and that's right where the cutting edge starts in line with that. When you're slicing through things, there's no thumb stud to get in the way to catch on. Uh, the flipper tab acts like a guard. Everything's just very, very nice on this. Uh, what is just sort of average on here that I like? Well, I like that the blade is this style, so it's very good for piercing and for slicing. So that's really good. It's quite strong because it keeps the thickness for quite a while until, you know, it starts getting thinner at the tip there, tapering down. Um, it's got good action. Those uh, ball bearings are just very good. Um, if I remember to hit the thumbs. Stud, I mean, if I remember to hit the flipper tab while I go to flip it, that is. So let's just do a little bit of a cut test here. I've got some of that uh, sizal rope that I sometimes use for a cut test. And uh, let's see if I can get through it. Remember, I got that section there that's halfway wore out, well, more than halfway wore out. So I'll try to stay forward, but it's going to want to slip off. So we'll see how this works. There we go. Not too bad. <sighs> And you can see up here that oh was I off screen so I cut through there on the belly and you can see that it's a nice clean cut there it just wants to slide forward so cuts through that quite well I do need to uh, clean up this edge I think I've yeah I have wore this edge off. It's not super sharp here. I thought I, I thought I'd only wore this off, but I must have done some more tests on the rest of it too. But yes, I did. Okay. So right now it's duller than it's supposed to be, but it will get nice and sharp. 
I almost feel stupid about doing cut tests because it really doesn't make that much sense to me to do demonstrations of how well a knife cuts because if I wanted to, I could just make it super sharp and then the demonstration could look awesome. Or if I dislike a knife and I want it to look bad, I can just put a poor effort in or I can leave it just slightly dull. I know you need to trust reviewers, but I'm not so sure I can trust every reviewer out there. And steel is so variable too. Uh, how sharp this is going to be, you know, moments after I sharpen it is going to be great. But after I use it a little bit, it's going to be different. The higher the quality of steel, the longer it takes for it to look to be different, but it's not always going to be the same. So it's much more about the quality of the steel, the steel type. And so as a consumer, you have to be or you should be more concerned with the steel type and things like the thickness of the edge behind the grind and let that information inform you more than what you see the person doing on a cut test. That's that's what I'm really trying to say. Because cut tests, what you see visually, can be very deceiving to what the reality actually is. It could be a whole lot better than the guy's saying, a little bit better, the same, a little bit worse, or maybe a whole lot worse than what the guy's saying. So, or gal, because there's girls in this industry too, and more power to them. So there you go. That's what we've got for this knife. What do you think of this knife? What do you think of this video? If you like it, please share, subscribe. Uh, any comments are great. Let me know in there. I try to respond to all the comments within 24 hours. Uh, don't always get there, but I try. And I get there eventually for most of the stuff. If you reply to a reply, I probably won't see it. If you make a comment and you really definitely want me to see it, make it a brand new comment in the review. I see all of those most definitely. And if you use a whole lot of bad language or even just a little bit, I tend to just delete those. We've got some young people, some, some children that watch this channel. Some guys watch it with their kids. And I try to have this thing totally family friendly. So that's why maybe if you've made a comment in the past and it hasn't shown up, that could be why. It happens very rarely but it does happen on occasion. And if you're just being belligerent, just being mean and angry and stuff, I tend to delete those too. Um, you know, intelligent conversation, fun conversation, anything that's enjoyable to the majority is the kind of stuff that I leave up. And that means 99.9% .9 of the comments stay up here. This isn't a democracy, so I don't even try to pretend that it is. It is what it is, is what it is. <laughs> So remember, if you want to buy this, email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. And that's the only place I will respond to uh, requests to purchase. Make sure you read the description below the video, above the comments. I've got some coupon codes there for GearBest, but better than that, if you want to buy these from me, I've got my policies for purchasing. Remember, $25 US each or $40 US for both of them. $5 US for shipping in Canada, $10 US for shipping in the US. If you are anywhere else in the world, I will still ship it to you if you want to buy it, but it will be the actual cost for shipping. And all the other stuff that I said before, it's down there below. Thanks for shopping at Canadian Cutting Edge. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really like this knife. I would much rather keep it than sell it. I do really want to see my niece get married and uh, all the other things I want to do this summer, visit my mother and all that other stuff. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and all that good stuff that you guys do for me. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.